This podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to provide medical advice. It exists to inform and entertain. Welcome, everyone. This is Poor Historians, a podcast misadventuring into the archives of medical history and beyond. Each show, we dissect a history of medicine topic from the past to learn a little something about how medicine got to be the way that it is today. I am Dr. Max, and I'm joined here by my good friends and colleagues, Dr. Aaron. Oh, am I supposed to talk now? Okay, yeah. Hey. And Dr. Mike. Oh, hi. I was getting a kick out of watching Aaron's eyes go back and forth as he was reading, and he was reading along with you, and then he didn't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> that his name was called. No, the scary thing is he doesn't have this document, so he's not reading along. I don't he's know not? What, he's what are you reading, Aaron? <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing at all. What are you reading? Nothing, <laughs> nothing. It, it looked like a haiku with the way your <laughs> eyes were moving. As well as our medical history intern making her triumphant return to the show after a single episode off, Alba. <laughs> That's me. That's how much vacation interns get. Mm-hmm. That was unpaid vacation, one just day. so you know, Alba. One, one day unpaid. <sighs> well, you guys know it's fun. What's fun? One day paid vacation? Unpaid vacation? I mean, there are worse things, I suppose. No, I was going to say it, it is. Oh, do you know what's fun? Oh, you're asking us. I, yeah. I was, oh. that was a, <laughs> let's try that again. You guys know what's fun. There you go. That invited, yes. What's fun, Max? What's fun? I bet you're this is our it. 15th take of that question <laughs> somehow. What, what is fun is chatting with people who listen to the show on social media. And i not exaggerating. It's actually really fun. And I just wanted to point this out because we've been at this for like over over two and a half years now, <gasps> believe it or not, oh is how long we've been doing the show. And we're actually getting to the spot where we have people who on social media will send us messages or like post on comments and stuff. And we've been doing all kinds of different types of engagement over the over this time. You've seen us do like little videos. You've seen us doing like medical history factoids and putting them out there. I just want to take a slight moment at the beginning of the show to say, Really? It's been fun chatting with a lot of folks. And since we're getting more of it, I, d- I just wanted to point this out that we do enjoy this. We do encourage it as well. And that we're over there on the Facebook and inter- Instagram and we're on threads as well. And uh, we've left X Twitter. So if you were looking for us over there, we are no longer over there. But uh, I just I don't know if this is so much a call to action or it's just just I don't know, just encouraging continued action. I just really appreciate it. So we're just inviting you again to look us up at Poor Historians Pod on those platforms and uh, give Mike feedback on this episode because mm-hmm. I'm sure there'll be room for it. And But I, I also wanted to point out to you, Mike, that we had somebody do that and say, hey, um, we haven't heard a Mike episode and I want to hear one mm-hmm. again. And mm-hmm. so you have at least one fan out there. And we're going to have to remedy this tonight. He's got lots of fans. Yeah. He's got three, three fans in here. I... Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Two fans in here. <laughs> I only respond to non-constructive criticism. <laughs> and that is what I will give you after the recording. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Before we get to the main part of our show, we'll try to stump Mike with a listener's trivia question in just a few moments. But before that, we're going to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Artery Inc. Listener, did you ever sit in school and just like doodle on whatever paper was in front of you? Just filling up the margins with little cartoon characters or stick figures jumping around the text. What if you did that, but like had lots of talent and a pension for anatomy inspired artwork. And and instead of idle doodles, you spent like 80 hours hand drawing an intricately stylized set of heart and lungs. And then you put that design onto a comfortable t-shirt and people all over the world could buy it and wear it and look super cool because of all that hard work. Well, that's, that's pretty much what Artery Inc. does. And they do not only that design, but a bunch of other designs that I suspect you would enjoy just as much as I do. So to be clear, I'm the doodler here, and they're the professionals. And it shows if you take a look at the stuff that they're making and then take a look through their product lines. And if you're, like me, a fan of anatomy and a fan of our show, I invite you to go on over to www.arteryinc, that's spelled I-N-K, dot com to check out their stuff and use code HISTORYPOD to save 10% on orders over $35, which does not apply to subscription boxes. Seriously, go look at their stuff. We'll get back to the show now. We are at Mike's Trivia, the part of the show where the listeners send us medical history trivia questions, and we present them to Mike to see if he knows the answer without any preparation, doesn't know what we're going to ask him, and if he does get it wrong, the listener is awarded a contrived medical eponym in their honor. 
And uh, well, if he does know the answer, something else happens, which has yet to be determined. So with that, Mike, are you ready for this week's question? Yes. The answer is Jonestown Massacre, Herbie Hancock, <laughs> and... Right to a dark place. Nicely done. <laughs> the Jonestown Massacre. I don't know that Herbie Hancock's a particularly bad reference. I was going to tie them together. The only way to connect all those dots is now we'll never obviously know. the CIA. <laughs> Draw me that's, a... that's how you connect all those dots. I didn't want to say it. I couldn't sure. see all three because then they're going to come, get, come after me. Now okay. we're on a watch list because I said the words. Well, Mike, your question this week is from Andrea, who included a citation, which is always lovely. Actually, a very oh, good boy. citation. Too. I'm screwed. So, yeah. Oh, no, this is a, this is an interesting question. And that is what is geographic tongue and when was it first documented? Very interesting. So yeah, geographic tongue is just the appearance of like funny lesions on your tongue. So it's not pathologic, but when you stick out your tongue you're going to have like this weird pattern. Um and, and it kind of looks like if you're looking at the globe from space, it looks like earth you know you might have like a south mm. america shaped little thing like sometimes um, it could look like a pangea but it also could look like it could yeah kind of, yeah i don't gotcha. believe that it changes over time so it won't go from pangea to our current earth but <laughs> okay um there's no tectonic plates involved yeah, I... <laughs> and when was it first described <laughs> yes it was first described by a crude warrior on pangea mm. so he um <laughs> was doing a study uh about he killed a couple of woolly mammoths and uh, mm. he was out with a hunting party and this hunting party, they were eating berries. They thought potentially these people were eating toxic berries, but it turns out that a small subset of the population will have this thing called geographic tongue. And it used to be called um, uh, Pangea's lingula, but they changed the name just because of, you know, 20,000 years had gone by since the first diagnosis. Mm, this... <laughs> Nobody knew what Pangea was. And yeah, no, they didn't call didn't it Pangea them. back then. We just called you don't it know that. all the known land. You don't know. I don't, yeah, even if I don't know that, Mike there. definitely doesn't know that either. So. I do know that. I just said it. <laughs> it's on the internet. It is now true. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, am I right? You are not quite. Can I have a second guess? All right. We already know the geographic tongue part. You got that part. So yes, to be clear, the geographic tongue. You you more or less describe that condition well. Uh, I'm gonna ex- say. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say 1918. It's like a. The only how many billion that... year leap did you just make? No, it was, just couple, <laughs> it was a couple of tens of thousands. But uh, well, no, Bill. Yeah, you're right or for the Pangea of, part. Like, yeah, yeah, for the human part. Hundreds you know, of millions, like, I, right? Yeah, I know. I didn't get the humans on the right land mass. That was the only problem. So yeah, I'm gonna say 19, <laughs> 1918 because of the flu pandemic, and mm-hmm. a lot of people were having oral exams to look for secondary signs of the flu. I like that you went from bonkers to like an, an almost well reasoned <laughs> I had approach, to. which I, I, I appreciate. It's still incorrect, but it was okay. it was uh, well reasoned. So yeah, you you said more or less what this condition is. That doesn't mean you got it right though, because it was really the when that's the history part. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's sort of a it's a weird thing. It's um it's also known by benign migratory glossitis, which is like inflammation yeah, of the tongue. That's boring. Uh, it's. It can be called like erythema migrans of the tongue, like a migrating redness, uh, or wandering rash of the tongue, which is my personal Ooh, favorite. That, I like that one. I like wandering that one. rash. Yeah, I agree. So what happens, it can last for like days to weeks. It pops up as these red patches, which can, some people say, will look like a little bit like continents, like on a map or whatever, but it can like come and go. So there's no tectonic shift, but it can like pop up on one part of the tongue and then go to the other part of the tongue. And, and a lot of folks who have like asthma, eczema, and other like kind of allergic conditions might be more likely to see this and there's maybe even a genetic component to it good news as weird as all this is it is as mike pointed out a benign condition it's not pathologic doesn't mean anything bad and and uh, but the we also the second part of this is the when was it described and it was described by rayer in 1831 and the article that was linked basically left that as like a share or prince, like just a single name. <laughs> Rayer said it. So I had to find that Rayer. out myself. <laughs> so I did some digging. And I think this is referring to Pierre Francois Olive Rayer. It's four mm. names. Wow. Mm. That's a lot of names. Was either a French physician or veterinarian. I got conflicting thing. I'm guessing physician part, or maybe both. I don't know. If it was France, then. it was probably both. It's probably both. <laughs> he, no, French accent. <laughs> he apparently was the first one to say this <laughs> this condition, this geographic tongue. So 1831, rare 
was the guy. And uh, the only, I guess the other notable things for him uh, I did find is that there's something called Rayer's disease, which I think I've heard of, but this is just a way to refer to chronic jaundice, yellowing of the skin, splenomegaly and hepatomegaly, which are just two things that mean big spleen and big liver. And so it's not uncommon that if your liver is swollen, that your spleen will be swollen and that you will probably be jaundiced as well. And apparently mm. they called it Rayer's disease back in the day. Well, there's a lot of things that could cause well, those Interesting. Things. I know about that disease because if you only have one, you have medium rare disease. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. But Megaly is have... my favorite Latin root. Ooh, it's a great like... root. It's Bigly. Just... Yeah, it's mega. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, <laughs> you got... You can... Oh, and apparently, too, Rayer also wrote a paper in 1850 about uh, the first description of anthrax bacillus, like seeing the bacterium microscopically, mm. which he found in the blood of dying animals. So he's actually got some credits. Busy guy. Sure. He's got geographic yeah. tongue, livery stuff, and... Uh, but it's not Rayer's tongue. No, it's not. I have his geographic tongue. What? You do? I do. Oh, I don't show know us, show I us. Have it. I don't know if you can see it right now. Ah, a little mm, bit. Yep, Left little lateral. Bit. Yeah. A little bit. It happens cool. if I eat like pineapple or something really acidic, then and and I'll get like white lines and stuff that show up too. Can we Fun get fact. a uh, HIPAA release from you before that goes live? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a hot dentist told me that it means I'm smart too. I don't know if you know what he was talking about or if he was just trying to flirt with me, but I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> I, I think I think that hot dentist had other things on his mind. <laughs> well. <laughs> I have no idea what to follow that up with. So <laughs> I like to go find France on it all. Before Mike keeps <laughs> expounding on that, I'm going to go to the eponym <laughs> awarding. So here you go, Andrea. You win. So you have your own eponym, which I might go forward and start making making up medical words with your name, which is which is fun. So here's here's your eponym, Andrea's glossologo vitalgia. <laughs> okay, glossologo. Glossologo Wittelja. Uh, in that, funny enough, it, it, it does turn out that this eponym is, you know, lingual or tongue related in nature. Uh, but more than that, Andrea's Glossologo Wittelja is a syndrome where there is a rapid cascade of neurologic signaling that basically transpires between the brain and the tongue, resulting in a transmission of biting or painfully accurate witticism when provided with almost any conversational <laughs> stimulus. So basically people with this condition are so quick-witted that their tongues basically speak the truth of the human existence in a reflex manner so fast that their brains aren't even able to comprehend what they were going to say. It's a really mm. powerful condition, but depending on circumstances, it can get somebody into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I was just going to say, they call it canceling disease. It's, it's, it's <laughs> potential. It depends. But it's like a reflex. You can't, you know, you almost can't control it in this case. So uh, there you go. Uh, Glossologo vitalgia. And uh, that is a fun word to write and say. Anyway, we thank you for the question, Andrea, and invite all of our listeners to send in one for Mike's Trivia Challenge. Just check the show notes for a link to our website and email or send them through social media if you wish. And we'll use them to stump them and get your own made-up medical eponym and word. There you go. I got stumped so, so hard. That's all right. It's almost impossible <laughs> I'm sick to get these stumped. Right. Somebody give me an easy one. There are a few that I think you might get, and I'm going to really? eventually test you like yeah I, i'm all right getting half of it you know but yeah, no. i mean it's kind of like playing tug of war with your puppy like every once in a while you got to let him win so some yeah point, no i'm gonna make sure that your your ego is <laughs> no it's, it's, no that's not correct you don't cool. ever let the dog win oh i, I thought I you were surprised just you didn't know this <laughs> don't let me win no oh yeah, this is actually character building for me it's fine no, well I'll, mike's I'll not a puppy it. but you shouldn't ever let the puppy win then just imagine, yeah, I'm Captain you. America in that machine, and they're putting the <laughs> energy up. It's getting worse and worse. I'm just like, keep going. Each time I get one of these wrong, I get stronger. <laughs> well, that's why I'm such a good doctor now because I get or so fatter. I don't know. Now. You can't tell. <laughs> Let your puppies win. Anyway, Mike, no, your no. you brought us a topic you can today. Do it kindly, I did. but you shouldn't let them win. Okay, let go them on. win. All right, I did. I, I brought, so I'm going to run it in case format. It's going to be a little bit all over the place. So people that had asked for a mic episode are probably going to be wishing that they hadn't asked that. Mm. <laughs> no, this is the essence of a mic episode. But That's my favorite the... part is the title that I can't even share with you. So don't Oh, you can share it later though, remind right? Remind me. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the case report. You are at a dermatologist's office. It's oh, 2002. God. This Trash. is a, a real case. 
Mm. It, uh, yeah, it's a rash. <laughs> oh, no. Every I'm MIT out. doctor's I'm favorite out. is, <laughs> yeah. No. Hey, come look at this rash and you get like five of us in a room. We all go, I, I don't know, but I don't think it's one of the three deadly rashes I remember. Uh, well, we'll have to find out, won't we? So uh, <sighs> you have to envision yourself as a 26-year-old female. Okay. So you, you it's gonna take go in with this. Yeah. <laughs> Quit squeezing your boobs. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I don't even know what makes the show anymore. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's good. Anyway, okay. So um, you're worried about a mole. You're going in for a mole check. You know, it seems harmless enough. Mm. You got a mole and some dark lines in your left armpit. Mm-hmm. You've been under a lot of stress lately. You're like, I'm just going to get this taken care of. I'm a little bit worried about it. The you know, it doesn't say what you're worried about. But you go in and you see this dermatologist. Now you, you are 2002, the correct? 2002. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yo. All right. What's what's up with this mole? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I'm the one as a dermatologist. <laughs> Am I the yeah. dermatologist? Oh, wait. God. Oh, you're the der- wait. Who's the? I, I didn't. I set that up. So I set up that you're the okay, dermatologist. Okay. So we're the, we're and the, the patient. patient. My, how about Alba is the dermatologist? No, this is just a I'm case. I'm the dermatologist. <laughs> yeah. We, Come on. We are the we are the providers. And y'all are the 26 year old woman. <laughs> That makes the most sense right now. Oh, yeah, yeah it does, actually. Since none of us have ever been those roles. Alba asked the better questions anyway. We all jumped to conclusions. That's very so this true. Makes sense. That's very true. She actually was like, what just know what Okay, how about this? You'll be, yeah, you okay, are neither so the dermatologist nor the female, but a, you're working a, through this case. So A 26-year-old woman has a weird mole with some dark lines. Yeah. And it's in, in her armpit? It's in her armpit, yep. Hmm. Okay, and if just, I poke it, does it hurt? No, nope. it does hey, not hurt. It's a great question. Mm-hmm. Does not hurt. Get, get right at it. Uh, how long has it been there? Uh, for as long as she can remember. How long can she remember? She can remember twenty three and a half years. <laughs> Those pre contemplative years. Well, has it ch- has it changed? What what makes it her? Has, why today? Uh, why it's today more pronounced. Before? It's more irritating. Yeah, and then she got one of the moles stuck on her bra strap and it started to bleed. So she came in. Okay. Oh, it started. Mm, okay. All What's right, well, irritating about it? It just, it's a fairly big mole. Yeah, how big it's is it? one of my questions. Yeah, like uh, half a centimeter by, her, by, her, by a half a centimeter. Uh, okay. a big I, I don't need any more questions. I'm a dermatologist. I'm going to yep. prescribe <laughs> triamcinolone steroid cream and do a punch biopsy. That's it. Okay. Every single patient. That's, All right, that's just fine. do a punch biopsy. You do that. You send her home. She comes back to the Actually, office. Actually, no cream. Just a biopsy. Yeah, she comes back in six months because she couldn't schedule a follow-up appointment in enough time and still there. It's not bleeding anymore. Now she's like, I just want this thing. Wait, what, what happened on. with the biopsy? We get results from the biopsy? It was a mole. <laughs> oh, it, the not, not pathologist just wrote, it's a mole. Yeah, <laughs> it's a mole. <laughs> it's a path, the pathologist. I ain't no doctor, but I don't like, think that's a good pathology report. And there's a little just bit one word, just, the just mole, period. Mole. Mole, period. Do you want to know about uh, other physical exam findings? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> there aren't any. There, no. there, there aren't, aren't any. There aren't there any. No other... Well, there's one. Oh, okay. um, I'll okay. ask I you. I want to know about that one. Okay, yeah, so you do an abdominal exam. Well, you don't have to because she's clearly pregnant when she walks in the room. Oh, well, that's important. The first time or the second time? Both times. She's more pregnant oh. this time. Okay. <laughs> Wait, she just said six Wait, months how went long by. Has it been? Six months went by, yeah. So, so she, she, was, she was just pregnant. a little pregnant. And now she's deliver really, today? <laughs> she's going to deliver within three days. Okay, okay. I don't know why she's at the dermatologist. So I that think probably has nothing to do with the mole, though. So we just It has something it. to do with the story, nothing to do with the mole. Oh, okay. What was the amount of time that that half a centimeter, like she's got this mole, it doesn't change, it doesn't change, it doesn't change. All of a sudden it starts getting bigger and then she goes in the dermatologist's office. What was the time frame of that, that like growth Years. Spurt? Yeah, years it was getting bigger and bigger. Mm. Okay. So are you saying the abdominal exam is like, oh, hey, you're pregnant? Yeah, but no problems with pregnancy. Baby's cool. still moving. Cool. Um do this another is... biopsy. <clears throat> you uh, send I'm not going to let you do a biopsy. No, no, because I don't want you to put anything in my body. I'm about to give birth. I don't want to have anything okay. injected. In how, how do you think we can help you today? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just uh, maybe maybe we'll set up a follow up to have this thing removed after the delivery, and we can do a biopsy then. Yep. Oh, okay. also, th- this patient then was also having uh, some financial difficulties, and okay. had to apply for state insurance okay 
just it's, mentions it offhand because she can't pay for the visit. What about, do you say there were some lines in her skin around the mole? Yeah. So the, she has this kind of unusual, um, like U shaped, an inverted U shaped rash in her left armpit. So it kind of starts on her breast tissue. The rash isn't really rash, it's like a darker pigmented skin. Hmm. And it's a line that goes up to the armpit and then kind of down the armpit as well. It looks very clearly like an inverted U. And along that line, she has a couple like skin tags and she's got this mole that she's worried about. It's all on one side, you said. All on one, all side. On one side, yep. I guess it probably, we can maybe talk about some possibilities here, right? She yes. ate her twin in utero. Yeah, potentially. It's always, always <laughs> on my list somewhere, but not. That was high. nowhere in my mind. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to escape. Nom, 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 nom. nom. <laughs> well, all right. So you got any mole. One thing you're worried about, if it's changing, if it's growing, if it's, you know, whether it's been there a while or it's just different and bothers you, you're always thinking, is this a skin cancer, right? You always have to think, is it something like melanoma? There are other kinds of skin cancer that aren't, that aren't as aggressive or scary in a cancery sense, but any mole that's been there and it's changed you got to worry about that now i don't know if this is that necessarily but it's a thought which is why we wanted to do a biopsy and take a sample i don't know why the pathologist was not super helpful on that well but he bleeding said, too right max I mean, bleeding too yep it yep. would always be a word changes in color of it you know so mm-hmm. especially i think there's a great question is well why why today this has been there that long it's a great question because there's something that's different in getting to it there's the other discoloration you described the darkening of the skin and that makes me wonder about something like um uh, what's that term dang it it's the um you see it with diabetes you can also see it with yeah with like adrenal disease anthosis nigricans that's it yep yep so you get like this darkening of like the armpits and and i think back of the neck just, too yeah the back of the neck but i i don't know why it would be one sided Number one, and uh, you know, and I don't. It, maybe it can be. I just it's not something we run into in our emergency this is department very often. Nothing like the four rashes I am familiar with. Mm-hmm. Do you want to know what it is? <laughs> oh yeah, that would, can the patient tell me? You guys have already failed. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Miserably. That's clear. I You're mean... giving us a dermatology question. Of course, we're failing it. So yeah, so you've just discovered the lines of Blaschko. The lines of Blaschko. Oh. The lines wow. of Blaschko. I, my Are, brain can't even tell me if I've heard those words together before. You haven't. Okay. Yeah. What's the name for the, the lines you're supposed to, uh, like, uh, surgically, the lines of tension in the skin? There's, like, that one diagram. Langer's lines. It's, Langer's lines, yeah. Langer's lines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so those. Totally different. Totally different lines. I'll, I'll go through the three different lines. There's th- essentially three different lines. <laughs> in, in, in all of medicine? So just, yeah, well, there's <laughs> Langer's lines. Yeah, so in 1861, Carl Langer started stabbing cadavers for some reason no he, he <laughs> he's like what's the thing again? to do <laughs> uh but it he was, was common back then yeah what Zero you guess and check <laughs> right are they still are they dead yep <laughs> so he he noticed that if you made a puncture wound along certain parts of the body that the wounds would open up in different ways and they would form like an elliptical looking wound so then he he mapped out what he called longer's lines like you know, the, where the skin tension goes. So just on cadavers, but it's essentially, we use that in, you know, plastic surgeons use that for wound repair. You kind of want to have wounds line up with Langer's lines because otherwise they might, you know, you might not have a, a favorable closure when you yeah. fix it. So that's the late 1800s. And, and, then, and you can, I would say too, like you listener, you can, if you look in a mirror, you can see these lines. They're just, it's sort of like, if you look at the skin surface really closely, you can you can see lines between, well, and the surface that basically almost map it out topographically. No, you can't. You know What's what you're that? looking at? You're looking at Krasel's lines. So Krasel's lines are different because these are in living individuals. Longer's lines are. Oh, I didn't know about the people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, it Krasel's essentially goes through the same. Yeah. So for that, it's just the way that the uh, the proteins in the skin line up. Essentially what causes Langer's lines, but so similar process. You're just, it one's in living patients. One's in cadavers. I mean, I look in the mirror and I see a lot of lines. That's, that's <laughs> yours are just wrinkles. Just, yeah. But so do wrinkles follow Langer's lines that that's, I guess that would be the question. Cause you know what? I think they, I don't do. think they, some do. Are Maybe wrinkles the like fourth if... line of dermatology? <laughs> we'll throw it in there now. I don't, there may be more lines, right? I'm not a dermatologist. <laughs> you said three earlier. 
No, I know. That's what I'm saying. There might be four. There might be five. I don't know. Okay. We're talking Langer's about Langer's Lines. So we got right. Langer's Lines. I've been saying Langer's Lines. I've always said it that way. I don't know. Crazel's okay. Lines. Different. They both, like what we've, what I've seen in medicine as I research all these cases, it's like, it's like the movies, you know, like when Top Gun came out and then within a week or three weeks, American Eagle comes out. So it's like the, the B version movie of a <laughs> fighter pilot, you know, you know, it's like, it's like this. It's like the guy, like Langer comes out. He's like, "Hey, I found these things," and then Chris is like, "Yeah, so did I." At the same time, but like not the same. American uh-huh. Eagle. Do you mean Iron Eagle or Iron Eagle? Iron oh. Eagle. Oh, that's <laughs> American Eagle. <laughs> clothing store. But they're well, the yeah. same lines. American Eagle just and one is if you're alive and ones if you're dead. Yeah, and that's. I think it doesn't really matter because we still use oh, okay. Langer signs to to do repairs but we might be oh, actually gotcha. referring to crazel's lines i'm actually i'm referring to longer's lines That's, yeah i'm taking i'm dying on that hill <laughs> crazel i kind of feel like crazel just sort of uh copied and that's what i'm said, saying and said yeah but they're alive <laughs> so i get credit <laughs> that seems like a really oh <laughs> yeah no recently so you medicine. get the trans the transformers movie comes out and then you get transmorphers <laughs> <laughs> Go bots. Like, what was Transmorphers? You've never Go-Bots watched Transmorphers? Sucked. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, they were little, and they just didn't. Yeah, all the GoBots. Mm-hmm. Like, Budget Transformers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then for the, <laughs> then when they changed, it was like. <laughs> and and it was GoBots, it was three GoBots changes. never got went... like a show. Actually, did yeah, they, they have did. a show? Yeah, they, they had, had a show. show? Mm-hmm. Absolutely had a show. Oh, yeah. I remember oh, watching man. the Transformers movie in the theater, the cartoon from way back mm-hmm. in the day. And then Bumblebee, I think, said, and I was like, in what? shock. I was like, w-. yeah, Ooh, they swore in there. What? Bumblebee doesn't even talk. Actually, well, no, in, in the, the new movie. he does? Oh, in the I new movie he does? does. Oh, maybe somebody Alba's else taking did. a big drink of wine right now. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> On oh, this God. digression. They're talking about GoBots. Let's... <laughs> time. So, Mike, you were going to say yeah. something about more dermatology. I we're going to no, describe... The third, third kind of line. Do you? Yeah, the third kind of line, the Blash Goes lines. Okay, mm, okay. so... Blash goes. <laughs> so blash cones lines are skin lesions that are often described in certain patterns in certain places on the body. So in your axilla, your armpits, you can get this inverted U shape. So it's going to usually kind of verges onto the chest, goes up like a U, makes the curve in your armpit, and then goes down kind of like near your back. That's one. You can get an S shape on your abdomen. Or there's a V shape with the points of the V pointing downward on the upper back. Hmm, okay. You can also get like wavy rashes on the, the scalp. So this Dr. Alfred Blaschko, he lived in 18 or was born in 1858, died in 1920. Do, do not Google it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I just want to see All what right. they look hands, like. Hands here. No. Hands are here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So hands are here. He, he's a German dermatologist. He German. might actually not make the connection here. But a German dermatologist who studied um, occupational rashes as well as venereal disease. He loved syphilis and he loved the rashes associated with them. And in 1902, okay. he co-founded the German Weird Society love. for the Fight Against Venereal Diseases, VDs. And when I was in middle school, we, they still, still said it was sexually transmitted disease, but they kept, they kept referring to these things like these used to be known as VDs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so in 1901... He's got a thriving practice, and then he, over the course of his career, he sees about 140 patients that had similar similar skin fightings to this. You're just really curious, and this is where it gets a little weird. So then, rather than like drawing a diagram of the rash or like taking a mental note, he buys a bunch of dolls, and then he like like diagrams the the rash on the doll, which mm. is a little weird. But then, so he it's more than a little weird. <laughs> it's yeah. already weird. That part, that's yeah. really weird <laughs> yeah that's weird okay he's going into an antique shop he's like buying doll or i don't know where he's getting a doll yeah, store yeah people probably then. worried about him he's like what are you doing he's like science mm-hmm. you're like okay Dollies, sir dolls mm. all right yeah. sir so it the weird thing is that, that these lesions could be anything so they could be moles it could just be dark discoloration light discoloration skin tags essentially it could be any skin finding and they all seem to follow the same pattern regardless of this is uh, see this this also illustrates why dermatology is so difficult because all these things can look like every all kinds of different things and they're all the same thing somehow it's it's an impossible field impossible completely right, impossible I mean, dermatologists I don't, this, don't really exist yeah i think so 
this stuff, you know, it's not terribly heavy. It's maybe a little bit boring. So I was going to try to spice up this episode a little bit. And I just got done reading the Iliad again. Um, okay. So All right. I'm just curious <laughs> so... as to what your favorite Greek mythological creature is. Oh, it's a great question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought I knew what mine was, and I actually changed my mind. <sighs> creature. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to try to pick the coolest Siren. one. But I, sirens you are cool. You said Siren? Yeah. yeah. I, was, I don't know. Are Sirens? leaning towards Sirens. Yeah. yeah does that count as a creature? I think it does, yeah. Eh, yeah. Because they they're were, women, I mean, but they had like they, they're not. seaweed for hair. They had some other thing. Yeah, and they would lure sailors to their deaths. I mean, they weren't normal women. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> a weird pause you made. <laughs> I have an ex that might disagree with you. <laughs> I will say as a kid, I was always fascinated, especially like it wasn't really Iliad. I think it was more Odyssey, but uh, Scylla and Chrybdis. I was always fascinated by, because I wasn't really clear that they were creatures or they were just like natural phenomenon, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. coolest I think name Scylla for was, like... but Chrybdis was the whirlpool, right? Yeah, and it had a somewhat of a conscious, like almost like they were. It was to talked as about as like a person. creature. Yeah. I, I was fast. I'm not saying it's like, but on the spot, if you put me on the spot, that was one of the ones I I liked the most as a kid. Mm-hmm. I always thought the Minotaur was probably misunderstood. Yeah, like he's and just kind of living living at the center of a maze, and nobody can find him, and then he's half bull, so they always assume that he's trying to hurt them, but he's maybe he's just mm-hmm. trying to like say hello but he's a bull but his, so but his head is half is the bull part so that's what makes you think like maybe that person is more animal than human. right so but then he couldn't like he'd be like oh, 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 you know and he wouldn't mm-hmm. come out the words wouldn't come out and he'd be all sad you know the the i think the most <laughs> important thing about that though is that there there was a more modern problem and it, it is that if you do have a bull head you are not going to be treated with respect. And that's what exactly what happened to Mantar, the wrestler, who came out with a giant <laughs> okay. Minotaur-esque head, and nobody took him seriously for some reason. But also, just thinking about it now more logistically, how could you possibly move around with that much mass on top of a human body? You know, mm-hmm. like, it would be almost impossible you to carry to that around. You would just fall right. over. And that's maybe why he was chasing people. He was just, like, trying not to <laughs> fall over. Like, <laughs> like, wait, I can't stand up. I can't stand up. Come back. Let's be so friends. So really, it was cruel that they me. put him in the labyrinth. They were just like, I don't know. The guy can't walk. We'll put him in there, and he'll just stumble around for eternity. Yeah, maybe. So yeah, really we got dark cent- twist to it. Yeah, you have centaurs. This is another one I didn't know about, um, echidna. So an echidna is an Australian marsupial or animal. I don't. I think it's a marsupial. But anyway, it's a half woman, half snake. animals. I, mammals, half woman, I half said. snake. Oh. And you th- <laughs> maybe I said animal. Yeah, half woman, half snake. Oh. Uh, you know, mermaids, harpies. A bird yeah, harpies are a woman. the worst. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> the sphinx. Um, but then, so my wait favorite. To see how this gets back. My favorite yeah. from the Iliad is the chimera. So the chimera is a specific creature because I used to think like each of these creatures is a chimera, but it's not. The chimera is a chimera. So it's it's a like terrifying creature it's a fire breathing lion and it's got the head of a goat protruding from its back and then a tail that ends with a snake's head Hmm. that's a Um, that's a creature made up by a committee of kids yeah (laughs) no everybody got a vote no (laughs) because Bellerophon was asked to kill the chimera and he did with help from pegasus who i didn't know pegasus is a horse with wings but pegasus parents were poseidon and medusa yeah, anyway. it's it's complicated. So, yeah, I mean, thank you for... Yeah, I would say mine is the Chimera. Historically, has been the Minotaur, because I think it's the, just the more Did common, Poseidon uh, not turn to stone because he was a god, or because he didn't open his eyes, or because... No, I think you're thinking Perseus, because Perseus is who killed Medusa, right? Oh, you're saying, like, when they, you know... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so cool, when things man. got a little heated. <laughs> yes. Probably because he was a god, maybe. <laughs> I mean, they made a horse together, so there's there's a lot of problems with <laughs> yeah, thinking right? this through. Why did it have wings? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to the case. So um, this 26-year-old lady... <laughs> So um, you, we, we kind of touched on the financial troubles that she's been having, and she's been going through it like an exceedingly tough time with her boyfriend. Uh, they have two children already. Um, she's pregnant with her third, and she's going to be you know, having a baby very soon. Um, so she couldn't pay for a dermatology appointment. Uh, this isn't 
part of the story. This is actually, I'm making that part out, but she, she applies for state aid and um, she wants welfare benefits just because she needs some time to get back on her feet. So in order to do that, she has to provide a DNA sample and the father has to provide a DNA sample and they test the children. And what happens is that the children have a genetic match with the father and not the mother. So then, so she gets accused of trying to claim benefits for her children. So they think she's actually part of this welfare fraud scheme. Oh, so, so I, I, so she, the so, case took a dark turn and I just talked like it wasn't that dark, but this well, is, I was like, yeah, that was, that's kind of a, so she has the child and it only has the father's DNA basically. Yes. It, they do or not. they only this find the baby that she was just prego with. That no. Just... So she's still pregnant with that one. It's her and this kids. father believes that these other two kids are, are both of theirs together. You know, he was there in the delivery. He saw the babies come out. These babies, uh, you know, they even, they suggested that either that woman is not who she said she was. And she was taking the place of some other woman that was the mother of these other kids. Mm-hmm. Or she stole the kids. So the oh sorry, the DNA was on the children who were already living and not birth. Already living, yep. Or, so I mean, it's not like so the child in her in her womb is question mark. Mm-hmm. But these are the okay. That makes they're way more not, sense than like okay. All right, gotcha. they're not her kids. Yeah. So and then she like starts to go crazy. She's like, you know, did what the heck is going on? And it wouldn't have, they would never would have found out if she didn't have to get this DNA testing to get on. Do you have to um, do that? Insurance. Apparently you do. And I, and I, I don't know if they, when they do a paternity check, I didn't look into this, but if they do that, obviously you check kids and fathers, but I don't, I always thought it was just kind of assumed that the mother was the mother, but they, maybe they check it just out of fairness. Okay. So in the real case, wow. they check the DNA and her DNA, the kids, her grown kids are not. Yeah. Okay. Are All not right. hers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so she's got, they don't have her DNA, but that, okay. But she says she gave birth to them, basically. She says she gave birth to them. She's got all, she's got her, hmm. the footprints. I'm she's going got back pictures. to Aaron's thing. Did somebody eat somebody in utero? <laughs> Maybe the DNA <laughs> came out. I don't know. Are these babies? <laughs> so they, they, uh, she's about to give, she goes through this court case. Nobody will, will represent her because they, they have DNA evidence. So sure. Like, this is DNA evidence. Sorry, Mike, I don't mean to interrupt you again here, but this has to do with the skin thing? This has to do with the skin thing. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. So they, this, and it's 2002. It's not, because yeah, we have DNA. Yeah, they're doing DNA, yeah. Testing. So they, nobody will represent her in her court case. And they're charging her with for fairly, like, serious like crimes where she's going to go to prison. Yeah. And she's going to have her children taken away from her because they're not hers. Hmm. Um, so she won't represent herself, or she represented herself, and then you know, she's about to have a baby. So like, well, we're not going to try this pregnant lady. She's like, I'm going to give birth on Monday. So if you guys want to come and watch, like you're more than happy to. Well, actually, no, that that's not what she said. But the that judge was, was like, I'm going to court order somebody to be there. So they court order a court official to be at present at the birth to watch the baby come out of this lady. Mm-hmm. And that official takes a blood sample from the baby, blood sample from the mom and checks the DNA. A couple weeks goes by. You know, she can't calm down. It's like, well, yeah, I, don't, well, I can't yeah. just here yeah. exist with my baby. And then what do you think the results of that test were? Well, I would assume the, the third baby, because it's on the podcast, the third baby doesn't have her DNA either. The third baby does not have her DNA either. What? Yeah. So that's what it's like head scratching. But then the court, you know, the, the court with very limited medical knowledge, right? They have knowledge of the law and all that stuff, but they don't know a lot about medicine. So they say, well... We're gonna take your kids away. <laughs> you did what? it again. I don't know how you did it. What? Yeah. Come on. God so then, but bless. that's her but kid. She's not doing a magic show. You watch the baby flying out of her. Come on. Stop yeah. It. She did it. But, Look over there. Illusion that. act. <laughs> Here's my baby. No. <laughs> right. So what? they still didn't believe her. They're like, Does "How'd this... you do it?" It's like, "How did yeah. you do that?" David so Blaine, instead like, of them oh. being like. Maybe there's something we don't know. They're like, nope, you're a magician. Well, maybe. No, luckily, so there was an assistant DA that was like, wait a second, this just doesn't seem right. Like, this doesn't seem right at all. We have to look into this. A maybe bit we more. should ask somebody with medical and genetic knowledge what, if this is possible before <laughs> right? we take before we this, take your kids yeah. away. Support and... kids away. Is it? Tell me, that's what they did, Mike. So they they did, and then at that same time, Ooh. an attorney takes a case. He reads this. I think it was in a, a local news report. He's like. This is nuts. 
Like I'm going to represent her. And he met with her and he's like, I believe her, you know, like, I don't think she's making this up. He saw all the pictures, all the proof. Like it's not like she was a bad mom. She lived with these kids that, you know, she had some issues with her boyfriend and they were like kind of on again, off again, but it wasn't like it was, this uh criminal enterprise you know sure. they're just like two people that maybe should sure this together. whole situation doesn't help them out <laughs> no. yeah right he's like wait oh so, <laughs> they're not your kids <laughs> no they're his kids and the, the messed up part was that they weren't going to be like oh you just go with your dad it's your dad they said you're a genetic match to your dad all all two or all three of the kids huh. but not to the mom none of the kids even so they, some of it match like is aren't there like some markers that's absolutely like absolutely no match like, there's a reason they don't they were, do maternity tests on jerry springer right maybe yeah just because it's presumed <laughs> i think but so so well, it's they, a, just presumed i mean you give birth and then the medical system tracks the baby from then on so yeah but how do you know that's the baby right so the baby, let's well, say you okay. put yeah, you saying. put a baby in a bassinet, and then you put the baby in the bassinet one over, like they all look just they look like California raisins. It's like I'll take <laughs> one of those wrinkly <laughs> things home and <laughs> raise it as if it's my own. <laughs> Desperate Housewives has a season about that, so I'm just putting really? that out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the baby mix up. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, and, and things like that. So they're kind of accusing her of these things. And you hear those stories of like the the woman that pretends sure. to be pregnant goes it sneaks into the nursery, sure. steals a baby, and pseudosis. Um, Mm. There's a term for it. So, you know, so they, they check her again. It's like, okay, let's try to be scientific about this. They check her. They check all the kids. No match. And they're like, all right, let's do it again. Send it to a different lab. <laughs> check her. Check the kids. No match. Then they, they're like, well, the blood doesn't match. Let's check hair. Let's do some cheek samples, some skin samples. No match. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of the samples and the type yeah. of samples. So then they're they're potentially going to push forward with this case, uh, with the fraud case and all of that, that she's got an attorney representing her, this assistant DA, they find a paper from the new England journal of medicine. I've heard of it. That was just published about a lady that uh, needed a kidney transplant. And so she was looking for, you know, donors. So what happens? Family steps up. So she has uh, two adult children, one minor child, and then a husband, the two adult children and the husband provide samples. She has a, a match, like a, a transplantable match with her husband. She has no genetic information in common with her two children. Hmm. So they take there's precedent months trying to figure out like what the heck is going on here. They do the same thing with her. But so she's not in the legal system. She's in the medical system. She yeah. goes to Harvard. They're trying to figure this out. Um, so they've got some time and it's, it's stressful for her too. Cause she's like, what oh, happened? Yeah. So she starts to think, are these my kids? And then she starts looking at her kids and she's like, well, the young one looks like me and the two older ones don't like, <laughs> That's even, uh, it's so crazy. Cause you know, she's obviously there when they, she remembers them being born. I'm sure it's a memorable yeah. event. I, if she uh, remembers you know, them never... being born, they've got pictures, they've got all the proof yeah, all geez. there. Like they, so this other lady too, she's like, I've got footprints, right? Look at the footprints. I've got, I've got these things. They're like, we can't look at that. Like, why do you even do it then? You know, like they're clearly the child that came out of her because they do that. The little footprint thing when they're, yeah, yeah, shortly after. pretty quickly after. So yeah, back to this lady. So they're trying to figure this thing out. They, they take sample after sample after sample. There's no match, no match, no match, no match. And their, their kid who was too young for, you know, kidney transplantation, uh, they decided to check the third child, and the third child has a genetic match with the mom, hmm. okay. which is unusual. This other case with the kidney transplant. Okay, so they they finally figure out that that this lady is a centaur. Yes, more specifically, <laughs> chimera. is a chimera. Oh, that's why you brought the Greek mythology. It's all yeah. I had Mike, to do it is a woven web, right? I had to do it sneakily. I'm impressed. I had to I'm impressed. My... Yeah. So, so she is what's called a tetragametic chimera. Mm. I'm writing that down. So what happens is that, <laughs> it, and it, depending on where you look, they, they say this is ultra rare, like 40 cases ever no. in the history of the world. But then they'll say potentially up to 10% of the population could be a chimera. Yeah, because how often are you going to need to test for stuff like exactly. this? Exactly. Right. So it's, it's really an unknown and the only reason that these two people were ever tested was because 
they had reasons to be tested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, although there are more striking uh, cases throughout time. So going back to our buddy, uh, our dermatologist, mm-hmm. Alfred Blaschko, I left this part out, but he thought that this is most likely embryonic in origin. And he thought genetic, and this is right after Gregor Mendel. And actually, Gregor Mendel's ideas were like, "That's dumb." It took him forty years to <laughs> to say like, "Oh, he was actually right." Well, after it was one died. of the later chapters in Mendel's initial textbook. Yeah, so so he's like, you know, I think this could potentially be a, a genetic thing because of where it is. It's embryologic. It's like they always these rashes are always in the same spots of the body. Mm, oh, okay. I um, see. So he would so. So these the uh, Blaschko lines are strongly associated with chimerism. Okay. okay. Oh, I see why you didn't want me to Google it because I probably would have saw yeah. keywords. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. How does this work? You're gonna tell so, us. Please tell us. So, uh, yeah, you get what? two eggs are released, and then two so two different eggs, and then two different sperm. So you get a sperm that that fertilizes each egg, and then early in embryogenesis, the two zygotes fuse and become one. Oh, so these then, two eggs, they're the ones they have two different DNA and the sperm have, is the same DNA because it's yeah. from the dude, I yep. guess. Yeah. So, so what okay. happens then is that sometimes the reason why actually it was hard to kind of understand why they wouldn't match with the mother. Right. Um, they're still her. They, they're still her, but it's, mm-hmm. I, I think it's the, yeah. Oh, maybe no, it's, it's like okay. the it's way confusing. that they, Combine. I don't know microbiology, but yeah, maybe it's like the way that they match up together. Oh, it's the yeah. So the each so yeah the the DNA of the child then is going to be based on one of the fertilized eggs, and you could be anywhere from fifty percent like we normally are to like a small percentage, and then depending on where the cell lineage is tested from, like you're going to be these two people are these yeah. people are two people. Like, Almost so it no is like, yeah. when, Aaron, when you're like, yeah, you ate your twin. I was like, uh, yeah. I was going to point out did. that I was right, but. You were right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was, yeah. So you just did. She ate her twin. She ate her twin. In the womb. Yeah. So. But um, not quite because it was the, the kid she had had two fertilized eggs then. So. Yeah. So it was like combined. a combination. Wait, so the de- kid she had had two, not her. No, they had she one. She was not. So she was the chimera. They She's were the chimera. Okay. Normal. And then, so with that, the kidney transplant, the, the, the lady's brother was a genetic match to be the mother of her children, which is, again, uh, it's, it was kind of like, she basically absorbed his DNA. She absorbed in utero. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Cause so it's yeah. like, Whoa. I have my DNA, but then when I, like, if I am chimera then i have my dna but then when i have a baby the baby has the dna of the embryo that i absorbed in the womb potentially yes so they the what? lady the lady that had the the two That's babies insane. that was going through the court case they do a cervical swab and that swab matches the dna of the children huh hmm. so what happened so was that yeah depending on where they, you sample then some of yeah. So they ran out of way. samples until they got to the cervix, and then oh. they were like, "Oh no!" Yeah. So you it. think like when the embryo forms, like it becomes polar, right? So if you're like near the top, then you're yeah. going to be head and neck structures, and then if you're near the bottom, you're going to be you know leg extremity genital combine. structures. And so the the predominant DNA is going to you know kind of tell you what to be, um, but Whoa. it's going to have a different marking. But it's all going to come together as one because it's the you know, it's still forming this being. Well, yeah, you got a common blueprint. So like yeah, so your this... variations are going to fit together because you're you're still working on the same blueprint. It's just. <laughs> yeah, so this has been happening forever. And people, the, the striking ones you could see, like the the Blaschko lines, like it's, okay, that's a su- really subtle finding. And good for him for identifying something like this seems unusual. This seems. Yeah, like it's, a, it's its own phenomenon, even if you didn't know why. Right. He didn't exactly know why, but I think he was like, he was on the right track, mm. but there, uh, there are plenty of chimeras that have been studied. There was one who was a, a child that was born a hermaphrodite, but it just looked weird because there was a line from the middle, straight down the middle from the, just above or just below the xiphoid all the way down to the genitals where there was extremely, extremely light skin on one side and dark skin on the other. And then on the dark skin side, there was a, like a semi-formed scrotal sac and a testicle. And on the light skin side, there was a fallopian tube and an ovary. Hmm. Whoa. Wow. 
So yeah. basically, the genetic material split right down split the zygote. Right down the middle. So yeah. that's a 50-50 chimera. That's, that was a female DNA and male DNA or zygote came together to form one. Wow. Which is just wild. Yeah. I mean, the, I'm sh- the probability of... I mean, you have to take the probability of having a successful fertilization of an egg and then another one of an egg. And on top of that, that one of those eggs has aberrantly, or at least what would be unusual, somebody else's DNA from somewhere up your line. And then those two happen to come together in the giant, if you're a single cell in the giant space of the womb and they form together, that's uh, those odds, no wonder it doesn't, I mean, at least according to the cases we know, it doesn't happen often. That's that's a lot of math to get whatever that probability is that I can't do off the top of my head, but yeah. that is that's that is fascinating. Yeah, it's a lot. So the the other interesting thing is would be you can we can make chimeras now, right? Because mm-hmm. in a way, when somebody has a, a bone marrow transplant, you basically take their bone marrow, you get rid of what was there. I mean, you're usually treating, not always, but you're usually treating a cancerous condition or now they're exploring it for sickle cell disease. And so you eradicate their bone marrow and then you give them somebody else's bone marrow. And that bone marrow will then grow throughout their bones and they will start making the red blood cells, white blood cells, according to this other person who you transplanted their bone marrow from. It will use their DNA as a, template to make all those cells and so if you actually take that person's sample of blood and check it they now have the blood type and a lot of the genetic material in their blood of the person that gave them the bone marrow but what mike i mean you know what you're talking about is like it's uh it's such a biologic anomaly and you're i mean you're right max you get a stem cell transplant or bone marrow transplant you are a chimera Mm -hmm. You have, like, if they check your DNA, you're most likely going to check positive, or you could potentially test positive for the donor. So that's probably why they don't do a lot of these on criminals. No. (laughs) I was going to say, it sounds like a good thing to do, do crimes, do a... Well, so then, yeah, so then the issue was, so the the it just got really interesting. The more I watched it, I watched a YouTube video on her story, and it was, like, infuriating. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, God, you already know the answer, so then you're like, how could you not get there? But then it's like, this was like exceedingly challenging. And they got there and they ultimately made the right decision. That's good. But the the people that were interviewed were like, what does this do for criminal justice then? Like, what if somebody is a chimera? Like, what if somebody then is either incriminated or released improperly based on DNA evidence that maybe they didn't check the right sample? And yeah, it could be maybe like, why they check, tests yeah, they check hair. Oh. And I think this is why they check hair and swabs and blood. And I'm sure that's like, that we got to check sense. to see, is there, yeah. is there other, everything better internal? line up. Oh, wow. But uh, yeah. So this happens like early, 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 way before organogenesis. When it looks like a burrito. <laughs> I don't we know we all like look burrito. like burritos at one point. Yeah, or, you're not wrong. Really? Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I felt like I was kind of doing acid when we went through embryology because, like, all the you kind of look like a burrito, and then maybe you look like a manta ray for a little bit, and then the manta ray like folds onto itself, and then you look like a grasshopper, and then eventually <laughs> you look like a little frog, and then the frog starts to look a little more human. Mm-hmm. It, there's all these wow. crazy stages. So and it happens fast, though. That all happens yeah, within six, like within weeks. yeah, yeah, at at most, yeah. That's a really interesting case. I don't feel that we were at all qualified to talk about it. Yeah, you know, I know. I looked at the same thing, but I was like, man, it's so this cool is you just brought like, it up, though. Like, I think, yeah, it's a great case. That's a very interesting case. Yeah, I would just I say, know. like, I'm so far out over my skis as far as, you know, I'm going back to embryology and genetics, which is early same. med school, first year like, med school. It comes up all the time yeah. in the emergency department. All the time. <laughs> Even mid presentation, I was like, wait a second, how could that be? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I don't blame you, man. That was tough. Well done, though. I appreciate it. That was a great story. Well, that about does it. So uh, Alba is the longest reigning arm wrestling champion among medical history interns in this business. What was the most interesting (laughs) thing you learned today? I learned that I used to look like a burrito when I was (laughs) in the womb. I've always felt like a burrito, so it's important. That is a perfect take-home message. I like it. Well, with that, we appreciate everyone listening, and we'd love to hear from all of you out there. So if you'd like to check our merchandise or provide feedback, you can reach through our website, www.forhistoriansbot.com. 
There you can send us messages or, and find links to our social media accounts. We do work to respond to all those posts under various social media places, and uh, we are most active over on threads at the moment. So if you want to participate in the show, use our site to send us a medical history trivia question. Or if you have time, go and leave us a nice five-star review on Spotify, iTunes, or whichever platform you choose. Until next time, Four Historians are signing out AMA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.